All right, and we are live. So welcome, Mr. Mehrotra. Uh, okay. We're here today to talk about Doc Commune, the second year. And uh, we have made some changes to, uh, you know, in this edition of Doc Commune. And uh, we're here to talk about that. We already have a set of questions. Uh, you know, people have been writing into us. So uh, we have quite a long list of questions, actually. So we thought it would be a good idea to go through these questions, you know, um, sort out people's um, queries, doubts, etc. cetera. Um, and uh, yeah, and, and everybody, you know, hopefully that will um, get more people uh, enthused about applying for Doc Commune. Um, so uh, to begin with, uh, this is really like a, a big sky question in a way. Um, so what is the purpose of PSBT's Doc Commune? What is your vision for it? I can't think of anyone better than Mr. Pilotra <laughs> to answer that. So why yeah. don't you go ahead? Well, you're the executive director of this project. So it's, it's you know more your baby than mine, but it's just uh, uh, our aspiration. And I think aspiration for Doc uh, Commune really takes forward uh, the work at PSBT. Uh, as you know, over more than sort of 20, 20 22 years, uh, we worked with uh, um, more than what, 600 filmmakers, two thirds of whom had never made a film before at extremely small budgets. And uh, the key to our huge success uh, was our, our process of mentoring and supporting and empowering filmmakers because even though you know there were that many starting out filmmakers, uh, for every film that we made, uh, we had two to three film festival selections, and for every two films, we won an award. So we were doing something right. And uh, uh, in these challenging times, as our funds began to dwindle, we found that we had less money uh, to support uh, you know, certainly full-length 30-minute uh, documentaries. Uh, so we were looking at ways at which uh, uh, we could, in partnership with you, uh, see how we could continue to support filmmakers. And so what we've, uh, uh, I think what we have come up, you and us, uh, uh, is really to see how we can continue the mentoring process uh, from project development to production and uh, fund a few uh, short films. Uh, I think not that few, I think we'd probably add up to around 10 films at least. So, you know, uh, at, at at low uh, low budgets, working with low end technologies, where filmmakers can be helped to refine their craft, uh, and uh, so uh, that's really, in a nutshell, uh, is the aspiration of doing this. Uh, you know, we are a not for profit, and so uh, we're not really going to be taking in money uh, from people we work with, and so it's really a service to the community of filmmakers uh, from one of the preeminent uh, film producing bodies, now no longer able to fund with the same level of generosity. Indeed, indeed. Um, and I suppose um, it would be pertinent at this point to point out that unlike most places, you know, I mean, I was looking at another body which, um, you know, had asked for uh, proposals, you know, a lot of times they ask for bank guarantees as well. Now, PSBT uh, continues to be one of those few organizations that, you know, takes a very different approach uh, to the idea of funding. Uh, of course, one of the critiques always is that, you know, the amount of money is small, but I think that is a larger reality that I think we we wish we could change, but we are also working within certain constraints, and which is why things are uh, the way they are. I think an important uh, uh, you know thank you for raising that is that you know we work with the filmmakers in a relationship of trust. You know going forward, uh, I should uh, you know point out that uh, uh, you know we don't interfere with what the filmmakers have to say, uh, only to the degree that it must conform for what it's worth to the laws of the land, uh, because you know, our, our corpus orig originates from a number of different agencies. And so you know, finished films need to you know, uh, conform and, and get census certificates. Uh, but beyond that, we don't interfere in the content. We just try and help uh, the filmmaker, whether we agree with him or not, uh, to say what he says better. And I think the other thing that comes in, that there's, it's not just one of us who sets, uh, who, who, who tells or uh, suggests to the filmmaker how he can make a better film, uh, but it's really his film. 
in uh, in more ways than one. And uh, I mean, we like to, if the film is done, we like to use it commercially. But if there are any profits or revenues that come from the film, they go to the filmmaker. So ours is truly, uh, as, as can conceivably be, an altruistic effort to empower filmmakers, and as it has always been. I think there's been um, some amount of uh, sort of uh, uh, questioning uh, on um, the fact that we're now specifically looking at shots. That's not something that we had done in the first year of Doc Commune, but this year we're uh, specifically talking about shots. Um, and 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 people have been asking us about that, you know, why specifically shots and so on and so forth. And if you could share your own ideas about that, and I'll I'll sort of uh, supplement that with <laughs> some of the other conversations that we've had. Well, I mean, let me say that you know we're we I think we'd be sort of uh, not averse to uh, mentoring people who wanted to do longer films, uh, except that we just don't have the resources or the funds. Uh, to um, uh, fund long films. And if we did, it would end up being two or three as opposed to 10 shorter films. And I think it's really a question of creating the space and the context of basically starting out filmmakers to refine their craft. And I think the principles of storytelling uh, are, are similar uh, for a you know, five to 10 minute film as they might be to a 30 minute film. Uh, so we are, uh, you know, I mean, of course, we would prefer people to make, you know, hour long or 90 minute films. But I think the, the external reality uh, is different, both in terms of audiences uh, on, say, YouTube or the electronic media, uh, where there is less space uh, for a longer film. And I, I did want to, you know, flag, you know, the larger context that uh, uh, picture, in a sense, that, you know, that, I mean, I think there is a difference between the kind of films that uh, we help filmmakers make, uh, which are more driven by uh, uh, innovation, by uh, the creative impulse uh, that uh, elaborates on the filmmakers having something to say. That's extremely critical. And it's been our experience that when what they have to say is driven by personal passion rather than thinking about what we might want to support is uh, really important. And I, in a sense that, you know, you know, just to point out, but, you know, like you know, seven years in a row at the International Public Television Conference uh, in different parts of the world, you know, our films made at less than $10, uh, uh, sort of $10,000, um, uh, you know, competed uh, with the BBC and Channel 4 and, and the big television networks. Um, uh, uh, as we did at the more creative film festival like Berlin. You know, we were there uh, for 10 years in a row, five or six times in competition. Uh, uh, so I think that, uh, you know, there is a difference in making a great film for the BBC, uh, which would be sort of mainstream uh, television, uh, not indifferent to eyeballs. So very often our films will get huge critical acclaim, but may not be eyeballs. So they also uh, provide a space uh, for experimentation and creativity. And we always urged filmmakers uh, to have the courage to fail. Uh, because unless you, you know, give yourself that space, you will not experiment, you will not to push the boundaries. Uh, there is a tendency to play safe in form and content and subject matter. So we really encourage uh, filmmakers who want to uh, work with us on Doc Commune to be looking at how they can expand their boundaries. And uh, we, you know, so long as there is honest effort, uh, I mean, you know, maybe we'll try and give you another film. At least that's what we used to do at PSBT when we had enough uh, funds backing us. So I think that impulse of, uh, uh, how do I put it, well-motivated uh, mentoring, which actually, you know, that actually seeks to support the filmmaker uh, to make the film he or she wants, uh, that will win critical acclaim, as opposed to a safe film uh, that follows the beaten path. Absolutely. And I think what we're also seeing as a larger trend in the world of documentaries is that, um, you know, you have a certain kind of documentary being made, which is, you know, now also going international, you know, so we now have uh, you know, Indian documentaries doing so well, you know, Shanak Sen's All That Breeds being the latest example of that. And that's a different kind of filmmaking, in a way, 
um, and um, to understand what it takes to even get there, you know, people have to go through a process. You know, we you can't just get out of film school or just be an amateur and and you know start making films like that immediately. So really, what Doc Commune does in a way is gives people an opportunity to understand the various conversations that are happening around documentaries across the world, to understand where they stand, and then to sort of see, you know, if, if they were to experiment, to really find their own voice in a way, you know, so it's a small amount of money, you make a shot, find your voice, and perhaps that can lead to other things. So it's really like a conduit as well to, you know, to making bigger films, um, you know, and, and even shots, I feel, if, if we are making shots, they also have a lot of, um, you know, opportunity to go to travel across the world. So, you know, you make the best film that you can with the given resources. Let's see how good you can really sort of, you know, do a job of that. You know, and it can travel and it can create a little, you know, buzz around uh, your name and your work and all of that. And, and that's an opportunity to be taken advantage of. You know, I don't want to be apologetic about uh, the, 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 the small budgets we are offering. They're actually just the icing on the cake. The, the whole, the, 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 the intention of the process is really to support and mentor the films that filmmakers want to make, whether they have funding or not, or even if they do have funding and the project belongs to them. Once it is developed, uh, they can go and look for funding elsewhere. And with a better proposal and a better project than they might have been able to develop themselves. Uh, so, uh, you know, I, I, I think the funding is, uh, is, is really a bonus. It's not the essence of what uh, we are trying to do. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so we have a question asking uh, whether PSPT will help, uh, you know, the mentees secure producers and, you know, look for more opportunities for screenings for the films. Um, what, what would be your um, response to that? Well, I don't think that, uh, you know, uh, you know, we have the, the you know the infrastructure and the bandwidth uh, to ensure that uh, the film uh, that you make from the mentoring process gets its due uh, exposure. Uh, you know, the film will belong to you, and we will only have the rights to screen them non-commercially or use them non-commercially uh, at festivals and and other events, or to raise further resources for ourselves. Uh, so. Uh, you know, we will make an effort to point you in that direction. Uh, but, uh, you know, the responsibility is, is, is yours for your own film. And whether we have funded it or not funded it, we are invested in you. And I should say that, you know, in, in, in identifying filmmakers, uh, we invest in the filmmaker uh, primarily. And then sometimes uh, he may be persuaded to nudge his uh, idea or a project in a somewhat different direction. To what he's uh, perceived uh, and I, I deliberately use the word nudge I mean it's not for us to tell you what you should feel strongly about mm -hmm. uh, but the form and structure um, uh, you know may may be able to evolve in something more effective but it's your work that we are seeking to mentor not for ourselves but for your sake uh, and for the larger good of the documentary film movement in India. And uh, I think it would also uh, make sense to mention at this point that because we've changed the format in which we're offering the mentoring, you know, the mentoring will be av made available. And in that form, you know, we will be getting in people who've been making films for a while to share their experiences. And that too is very, very um, important and valuable. So uh, a lot of times, you know, all these ideas and conversations around producers and screenings and funding, you know, these are um, these are um, conversations that others have had. Uh, you know, there are other filmmakers who have accessed some of these resources and what the period of mentoring will help everyone uh, is to actually understand, uh, you know, how to access these resources, who to speak with, what kind of, you know, to learn from others' experiences. Um, you know, so so I think that is also something that is um, to be kept in mind. And to continue with what you just spoke of, uh, this year we're not uh, looking at the projects, we're looking really at the people applying. And it is only after three months of mentoring that we'll be asking everyone to put in their ideas, their pitches, by which time, because, you know, what we also experienced last year was that 
a lot of the people had really interesting ideas, but they didn't quite know how to pitch their ideas or how to write their proposals. So that's a gap that we are hoping to fill this time. So everybody will go through a period of mentoring so that they can think a little more about their ideas, how they'd like to pitch, you know, how to pick their protagonists, how to build that relationship, you know, all of those sort of very basic things which are um, so important in that process of making a documentary. And uh, post that, everybody will be given an equal chance to uh, you know, make their proposal to PSBT and, and get that um, funding of um, two lakhs. And we started off with promising uh, eight film grants, but I think we're quite hopeful that we'll be able to increase that at least to 10, if not uh, 12. 12, yes, I think so. And I, and I did want to flag that, uh, uh, I mean, just reaffirm that it's really important the filmmaker has something to say. And I mean, we can help them develop what they have to say, not what we have to say about what they have to say. But, uh, you know, to, to really build on a, it's been our experience with PSBT and the 600 odd filmmakers making 700 films, and that's a lot of experience. That when a filmmaker is working with us and at this stage uh, is making a film about something that he's experienced, draws on his personal processes, his personal understanding, and something that he feels most passionately about uh, is a great facilitator of a great film. Absolutely. Uh, the other uh, question, um, a favorite question, and a question that we also struggle with all the time, is how strict will PSBT be with the deadlines? Uh, very that, I'm afraid, uh, <laughs> is inflexible. And it is nothing, I mean, it has less to do with PSBT than it has to do with the government. Uh, I mean, it, it's probably mundane for you, but the government has come up with a new accounting system where you can't carry financial commitments forward uh, to subsequent years. So whatever is uh, you know, allocated in our expenses and budgets in a particular year uh, has to be uh, productively and usefully spent or we end up paying taxes on it. And it'd be very foolish for us to donate our very limited resources, which are really intended for the filmmakers as taxes to the government. So I'm afraid we have no discretion uh, on that issue. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, we also have a few questions on what criteria the filmmaking grants would be um, given um, any, any thoughts on that? I mean, we, of course, spoke about how uh, we really have no agenda to push, and it really depends on the strength of the idea. But it's possible that some of the grants might have an associated theme with them. Um, well, you know, I think that we're going to have, you know, we have two kinds of you know, the grants. Are, I mean, our ability to do this is that we also have, you know, we also have the involvement of the Foundation for Universal Responsibility of the Dalai Lama. Uh, that will be sort of supporting about half the films, the, the money for half the films, but not the mentoring process. Uh, so, of course, the foundation has some uh, uh, broad agendas, you know, which look at, uh, uh, you know, the agenda of the, the environment, uh, of interfaith, uh, you know, harmony, of uh, uh, nurturing compassion, training the mind, sort of more films of affirmation. Uh, um, then uh, you know, PSBT is sort of completely subject neutral. Uh, whereas, uh, and we will be you know, trying, seeking to approach other organizations uh, who may be willing to expand on this. And, uh, but uh, you know, the, the, the agendas of those are, are always very broad. It's uh, not promoting uh, something specific for a particular ideology or a particular philosophy. But in, in the larger canvas of ideas and uh, possibilities, and you know, it's always a tricky uh, one as to what uh, uh, criteria. So I think the first uh, you know criteria that comes out is this project viable, and and then beyond that, it's uh, you know you, there's no marking system which tells us that this is going to work and that's not going to work, and we draw on our experience as to what is likely to work. And as I mentioned, that sometimes we are excited by the audacity of the project and, and the intent to experiment and push the boundaries as opposed to a safe, predictable film. Uh, we are not fearful or discouraging of failure. 
And uh, so we, will, we do look at uh, how passionately the person feels about his subject matter, because uh, I think that encourages filmmakers to extend their boundaries and invest more of it in themselves. Uh, because like I said, this is a non-commercial enterprise. Uh, you don't, you know, we have no, no product to sell, no ideology to sell uh, from the film that you make, other than to try and turn you into a better filmmaker uh, that you can promote yourself and, 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 and the passion that we feel for the genre uh, is expanded. So um, I think we've, we've covered most of the questions. Um, somebody is asking if they're eligible to apply if they're an Indian citizen currently living abroad. Uh, we're okay with that as long as they have an Indian fan number and yeah, our criteria there is again is limited by the law. I mean, we have no problem where you live or who you are in a sense. But I think that uh, the law now requires the, that we fund people who have an Indian PAN number and an Indian bank account. Uh, so if you're, I mean, if you're permanently resident abroad, I guess that would be challenging. But you're someone who is living in India and studying abroad, or you know, taking a year off or something like that, or you have a project that you. And I, and I also want to say that uh, you know, filmmakers are, are, are welcome to raise additional resources uh, beyond what we invest. Because like I said, the film belongs to them. I mean, we're very clear about that. And uh, we only do need uh, non-commercial rights. And that too, we can hold back for a few months uh, in order for the films to be seen and for us to use those films to raise further resources to be able to support more work such as this. Yes. Um, I'll just quickly reiterate the uh, format of Doc Commune this year. So we will um, start with our sessions in April. Uh, the first three months will be intensive um, for all the mentees because we'll go through uh, mentoring sessions, one each week. Um, and these will be sessions with stakeholders uh, from the community, filmmakers, uh, critics, people who've worked with film festivals, you know, film festival curators and so on, to really give like a very wholesome understanding of this new landscape of documentary filmmaking. Uh, as we approach the third month, you know, we will encourage all the mentees to start thinking about the films that they'd like to uh, apply to us with. Uh, and, uh, you know, because they would have gone through uh, sessions on writing of proposals, you know, making up, making their pitches, etc. We're hoping that we'll get some very competitive looking proposals. Uh, from there, we will have to make that very difficult choice of um, 10 to 12 uh, films that we'll have to select. Um, and once uh, we've selected, uh, you know, then the filmmakers get their time to make their short um, uh, docs. Uh, so that's that's pretty much it's a simpler format this year. Uh, but we're hoping to reach out to more people, both in terms of mentoring and also in terms of supporting um, with their final films. Uh, so on that note, I just want to add before we wind up that uh, in a number of questions came up on can non-professional filmmakers uh, apply? And the answer is yes, you're encouraged to do so. All things being equal. Uh, I mean, we'd like to expand the constituency of uh, filmmakers. And, you know, a professional, uh, the definition, we've been through this with some of our other, other projects, the definition of a uh, professional filmmaker is someone who makes a living from making films. And uh, I think we are, we are as interested, if not perhaps more interested, in people who have not yet graduated uh, to making a living uh, from uh, making films, uh, but wish to do so. And uh, I mean, I should just add that with, with both of and, and, and my own experience, it's really tough. So if that's what you're getting into. Uh, uh, it, it, you know, you need to have even more passion and greater reflection, particularly in these times that it's extremely, extremely difficult uh, to uh, find the resources or the mentoring to make the film you want to make. Uh, because the films are inevitably, uh, I, I, I really don't know, and I don't say, I, don't, I say this with great humility, I don't know of any uh, organization in the world uh, that has uh, supported as many independent filmmakers to make as many independent films that they wanted to make on the subjects they want to make. I mean, even if you go to 
uh, I, you know, uh, the big television companies from, you know, Netflix to Doordarshan, uh, no one will give you money to make the film you want to make and to say what you want to say. I mean, we are constrained. I do want to, uh, you know, flag that. And it is, it can be an issue for some people in these times. I, our films do need uh, a, a census certificate. I have to say that uh, contrary to popular perception uh, with our films, we have not had any significant uh, issues uh, with the censor board and certainly nothing that has uh, required uh, the essence of the film to be changed or more than a few seconds uh, of uh, you know, a shot may maybe be trimmed. So we like to believe uh, that there is far more freedom available to us than we immediately think there is, particularly for the independent documentary. And um, PSVT has always uh, supported first-time filmmakers, and I think uh, that um, uh, that intent continues to be there. So I would just like to um, encourage um, anybody who's thinking about applying to go ahead and apply, to not be daunted, um, because I think it's a very interesting experience that lies ahead uh, for anybody who's uh, invested in the idea of making documentaries in this country. And Aparna, maybe you could clarify that even, uh, I mean, there are sort of three three categories in a sense. There's those that uh, that uh, a very large number of people can log in and be an audience to what is unfolding. Uh, then there are the people who go through the mentoring process. And then there are those that we can are able to fund. So the total number of people who can participate in the process is, uh, is very large. Uh, and even as observers, I think there is a certain uh intense learning that will take place because you will be listening to the perspectives of not just Aparna or me but some of uh, India's most successful recognized and celebrated filmmakers and technicians so there is an inherent learning in just being online uh, with what we're doing and not just that, you know, what for us is also very useful, and it is something that we found useful in our own filmmaking careers, is the importance of a peer community. And that's really what Doc Commune means, right? The fact that we're all coming together and what we will be encouraging the filmmakers to do is to share their ideas with each other, respond to them, you know, try and solve problems for each other. So to really build on that idea of a community, which I think in these post-COVID times has become quite a challenge. So these are some of the important and uh, interesting aspects of Doc Commune. Um, so on that note, um, I guess we can call, um, uh, we, we can end this conversation. Mr. Mehrotra, what do you think? Well, yes, and uh, well, I, you know, we, we look through, you know, we look to exciting times ahead uh, with another sort of wonderful group of young people and our own uh, veterans uh, PSBG goes back 22 years, and so we have a large constituency, and we look to working and connecting with you, and above all, learning and having fun. I mean, I think it's very important that we have a quality of uh, lightness, of experimentation, of uh, being able to and willing to take risks, uh, so that we can, you know, I don't know, we may have Eisenstein's uh, in waiting or Scorsese's in waiting who are watching this program. So good luck, everybody. And we look forward to our work together. Thank you so much for watching. And we look forward to receiving your applications.